time in specialized aquatics uh, solutions, which is uh, one of the fish shops that I like to get my stuff from. Um, they've got a very professional setup. Um, and I do like to check out what they have every now and then. It's a bit far from where I live, so we don't come here that often. Uh, so here, check out their fish room. So this is their livestock room. They've got lots of fish individually boxed up and they'll let you test out the feeding if you'd like. Um, I only like to get fish that are already feeding on pellets because I don't like to feed any frozen food because I am lazy. Uh, but of course, you know, that's probably the better thing is to feed them some frozen food. Here they've got a whole selection of SPS corals as well. I think most of these are cultured because I can see the little base plugs. Uh, and they've got lots more livestock as well. Come this way. Here's a tank with mainly LPS. Um, it's something that we've sort of phased out in our tank because we don't have the calcium reactor um, going anymore. Um, anyway, I quite like the soft corals. But some of these really are quite spectacular. I love the green torch in the back there. Ooh, and there's some nice red Goniopera's as well. Ooh, and really I like the Albuquera's as well. They look very different from Goniopera's because they get the fat swollen tips of the tentacles. It makes them look like sea daisies. Oh. So I really love soft corals and they just got a bunch in and you can see these are all the long tentacle toadstools which I really like but I haven't had that much success with. I have one in the tank. It's sometimes opening, sometimes not, uh, and it definitely isn't growing as fast as the short tentacle ones. But now they have so many and all the different forms, I'm going to take my chances with a couple of pieces. Help me choose some. Rhinopias are also called scorpion fish and they're such enigmatic fish. Come take a look at this one, this pinky purpley one, it's like a lavender colour, it's really big. And look at the fins, as the fins are erected out, you can see the lacy gaps between the fins, it's so pretty. So do you even see how it's swaying as it would in the current? It's trying to camouflage itself and it really does look like some macroalgae or even coralline algae. You can see it little sway in the current, totally, completely camouflaged against any small fish that might swim by and make it into its quick meal. We're gonna get a live demo on the Actasia laser. We're gonna try it on this, which is the pest anemone in this tank. Oh, look, 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 it's reacting. How does this work? It uses UV. Eh? Yep. Oh, wow. But it has to be this close. Eh? So it's zapping it by UV uh, rays. Oh, look, look, look. Clearly, it's quite unhappy. So, so how do we know when, when it's done a good enough job? Have we done a good enough job now? Or no, it must melt. Generally, it should look like it's shrinking. It is, it is. Then it but will... how do we know when it's shrunken enough? For you, some, some of the um, cases is that we try about two times, mm -hmm. then it will be completely dead. There's actually a green light when it's inside water. Oh, oh wow. It's gone. Left this. Here. That one. Wow, it's really very big. It's very green. Happy? I always learn from you that bigger is always better. <laughs> because it has a higher chance of surviving in the aquarium, of course. It's a better deal as well, I think. So take the biggest one you can get all the time. Words from Hui Shan. So you don't want the pipe, right? No, thank you. Okay, so usually we keep the toadstool on the pipe stand. And look at how it actually already grew into the pipe. So I think this maybe takes about five days or less. So when you go home, put it on a rock or anywhere you want stuff, the skin will generally just grow onto wherever you want to, okay? Okay, so we'll pack it for you now. 